Ada sat on the cold hard floor of her small room. Her knees pulled up to her chest, tears streaming down her face. She was only 18, barely out of secondary school. Yet, here she was, pregnant and alone. Her parents had warned her countless times about boys, but she did not listen. She believed Chike when he said he loved her. Believe in him when he whispered sweet promises into her ears. Now, those promises were as empty as the room she sat in. Chike had disappeared the moment he found out she was carrying his child, leaving her to face the shame and judgment alone. Ada, you have brought disgrace to this family. A mother had screamed. The day they found out, a father's silence hurt even more than a mother had words. He had not spoken to her since, just turned his back on her, as if she no longer existed. The shame was too much for him to bear. As the months passed, Ada's stomach grew, and so did her fear. She was not ready to be a mother. She did not know how to raise a child. And with her family practically disowning her, there was no one to turn to. The weight of her situation crushed her spirit. And when the time came, she made the hardest decision of her life. After giving birth to a healthy baby boy, she handed him over to an adoption agency. It broke her heart to do it, but what choice did she have? She had no job, no money, and no support. The day she walked out of the agency, leaving her baby behind, Ada felt a piece of her soul die. Years passed and life moved on, but the pain never left. Ada found work as a nanny, taking care of other people's children. A cruel reminder of the son she had given away. She tried to bury the memories tried to forget. The regret gnaw at her, haunting her dreams, but she had no choice but to carry on. One day, fate decided to play a twisted game with her. A wealthy family hired her as a live-in nanny for their young son, Emmanuel. He was a lively boy with big bright eyes and a smile that lights up the room. There was something about him that tugged at Ada's hearts, a familiarity she could not quite place. She brushed it off as the usual affection she felt for the children she cared for. But as the days turned into weeks, that feeling grew stronger. Late one night, Ada was cleaning up Emmanuel's room when she stumbled upon a small one art fire. Curiosity got better of her. As she opened it, her hand trembled as she read the words on the adoption papers. It could not be. Her heart raising as she stared at the name Emmanuel. The birthday matched. The location matched. Everything matched. The child she had given away all those years ago was now the very boy she was caring for. Ada's word spun as she dropped the fire. She stumbled back, collapsing onto the bed, her mind raising with a wide wind of emotions. How was this possible? Of all the families in the world, how had she ended up in the house of the son she had abandoned? She watched him closely. After that, noticing the little things, the way he laughed, the way his eyes sparkled with mischief, the way he called out her name with such affection. It was like looking into the mirror of the past, seeing bits of herself in him. But she could not say anything. She could not risk losing her job. And what would she even say? How could she explain why she had abandoned him? Would he ever forgive her? Would the family ever accept her after knowing the truth? 
As Emmanuel grew older, he flourished, excelling in school and eventually became a successful businessman. He was a millionaire by the time he was 25 and at that watch from the shadows, proud yet heartbroken, her son was everything she had ever hoped for. But she remained nothing more than his nanny. Now, as she sat in her small room, the same cold had flooded her. She wondered if she had made the right choice all these years ago. Should she reveal the truth? Should she tell Emmanuel that she was his mother? Or would doing so only bring more pain for both of them? The decision weighed heavily on her. She had been through so much pain and regret already. Could she bear to face mom? And what if Emmanuel rejected her, just as she had rejected him? Tears streaming down her face as she whispered to herself, What do I do now? Ada could not sleep that night. The weight of the truth pressed on her chest like a heavy stone. She lay in the darkness, her eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling. How could she go on pretending? How could she live in the same house with her son, watching him grow, succeed, and never tell him who she truly was? The next morning, she moved through her duties as if on autopilot. She cooked breakfast, cleaned the house, and prepared Emmanuel's favorite meals. But her heart was not in it. Every time Emmanuel looked at her, with that one familiar smile. Her chest tightened. She wanted to reach out, to tell him that she was the woman who had brought him into this world, that she had never stopped loving him. But the fear held her back, the fear of what could happen if she revealed the truth. As she cleaned the living room, Mrs. Ayodele's voice broke through her thoughts. Ada, are you all right? she asked. Concerned lazy in her words, you have been quiet lately. Ada looked up, startled. Mrs. Ayodele was a kind woman, always treating Ada with respect. But there was a distance between them that Ada never dared to cross. She was an employee, after all, and nothing more. I am fine, madam, Ada replied quickly, forcing a smile, just tired, that is all. Mrs. Ayodele studied her for a moment, then nodded. If you need a break, feel free to take some time off. You have been working hard. And Emmanuel, well, we could not do this without you. Ada's heart ache at the word. If only she could tell her how much more Emmanuel meant to her than just a job. But instead, she simply nodded and return to her cleaning. They turned into weeks, and Ada continued to struggle with her emotions. Emmanuel was striving, his business ventures growing more successful by the day. He often traveled, leaving Ada and the Ayodeles alone in the large house. Each time he returned, he brought gifts for everyone, including Ada, but those gifts only deepened her pain. Reminding her of the love she had for a son who did not know she existed. One evening, Emmanuel returned from one of his trips. With a special announcement, the family gathered in the living room. The air buzzing with excitement, Ada stood in a corner, watching as Emmanuel spoke. I have some great news, he said. I have just been offered a partnership in one of the biggest companies in Nigeria. It's a huge opportunity, and I have decided to take it. The room erupted in applause, and Emmanuel's parents hugged him, their face glowing with pride. Ada clapped softly, her heart swelling with conflicting emotions. She was so proud of him, but the distance between them felt like an insurmountable war. Later that night, as the celebration died down, Emmanuel found Ada in the kitchen, cleaning up after the party. 
Ada, I wanted to talk to you, he said, his voice soft. She turned to face him, a heart pounding. Yes, Emmanuel. He smiled, but there was a seriousness in his eyes that made Ada nervous. I just wanted to say thank you. You have been with us for so many years, and I will not be where I am today without you. You have always been like, well, like a second mother to me. Ada's breath cuts in her throat. The words hit her like a punch to the guts, and she struggled to keep her composure. Emmanuel, she began, her voice shaking, but she could not finish the sentence. The weight of the truth, pressing down on her, threatening to spit out, but she swallowed it back, forcing a smile instead. You have always been a good boy. I am proud of you. He left the kitchen and Ada sank into the chair, her hand trembling. The words second mother echoed in her mind. How could she continue to live this life? How could she stand by and watch as the truth slipped further and further away? The next day, Ada made the decision. She would reveal the truth. She could not carry the burden any longer, could not continue to hide behind her silence. Emmanuel deserved to know, no matter the consequences. But as she prepared herself for the conversation, doubt crept in. What if Emmanuel rejected her? What if the Ayodeles turned against her? Would she lose everything she had worked for? The only life she had known for years. Her mind raised with fear and uncertainty. But she knew she could not keep running from the truth. The time had come to face it. No matter the outcome, she walked into Emmanuel's office later that evening. Her heart pounding in her chest. He was seated at his desk, engrossed in some document. But when he saw her, he smiled warmly. Ada, come in. Is everything okay? She took a deep breath, her hands trembling as she claps them in front of her. Emmanuel, there is something I need to tell you. Something important. He looked up, concern flickering in, in his eyes. What is it? Ada hesitated. The words caught in her throat. This was it. The moment that could change everything. But before she could speak, the door swung open and Mrs. Ayodele walked in, interrupting them. Emmanuel, darling, I need to talk to you about the new project. She began, her voice trailing off when she saw Ada standing there. The moment was gone. Ada quickly excused herself, her heart heavy with regret. She had missed her chance, but she knew that she could not keep avoiding it. The truth could have to come out sooner or later. Ada spent the next few days in quiet torment. She replayed that moment in Emmanuel's office over and over again in her mind. Every time she found herself alone, she imagined how it could have gone if Mrs. Ayodele had not walked in. Would Emmanuel have listened? Would he have been shocked, angry, or even willing to understand? But the fear of the unknown kept her paralyzed. The weight of the secret she had carried for years felt heavier than ever. One evening, as she sat on the edge of her bed, her phone rang. It was Ungazi, a childhood friend from the village. They had not spoken in a long time, but Ungazi had been the only one who knew about Ada's pregnancy and the pain of giving up her child. Ada, how are you? It'd been a long time. Ungozi's voice was warm and familiar. I am fine, Ungozi, Ada replied. Why do you sound like that? What is wrong? Ungozi asked, consigned evidence in her tone. Ada hesitated for a moment, then in a rush of emotion, she told Ungozi everything about finding out that Emmanuel was the son she had given up, about her struggle to reveal the truth and about the fear that had kept her silence. 
this is serious. Ngozi whispered on the other end. You have to tell him. He deserves to know the truth. I know, but what if he hates me? What if I lost everything? The Ayodele's have been good to me. I cannot betray them like this, Ada said, her voice cracking with the weight of her emotions. Ungozi was silent for a moment before she spoke again. Her voice soft but firm. Ada, you are his mother. Nothing can change that. You have already lost so much. You cannot let fear stop you from reclaiming what is yours. Do not wait too long. You might regret it forever. Those words lingered in Ada's mind long after the call ended. She had already sacrificed so much for Emmanuel's sake. Could she really lose him now? After all these years, the next morning, Ada woke up with a strange sense of resolve. She could not keep hiding behind her fear. It was time to act, to confront the past once and for all. She could not keep on running from the truth. But as fat would have it, Emmanuel had plans of his own. That evening, after dinner, Emmanuel gathered everyone in the living room. He stood before his parents, beaming with excitement, while Ada watched from the corner. I had pounding in her chest. Mom, Dad, Ada, I have something to tell you all. He began, his eyes shining with happiness. I have met someone. Her name is Ifoma. And she is incredible. I am in love with her. And I have decided to ask her to marry me. The room fell silent for a moment before Mr. and Mrs. Ayodele broke into smile, congratulating their son with joy and pride. But Ada felt as tough. The ground has shifted. Benight her feet. Emmanuel was getting married. How could she reveal the truth now? When he was on the brink of starting a new chapter in his life. As the Ayodeles continued to celebrate, Ada slipped quietly out of the room, her mind in tumult. The timing could not have been worse. How could she burden Emmanuel with the truth about his birth when he was so happy, so full of hope for the future? But deep down, she knew that the longer she waited, the harder it would become. She had to tell him before it was too late. The following day, Ada decided to write a letter. She poured her heart out onto the pages, explaining everything, the circumstances that led to the pregnancy, the pain of giving him up, and the agony of keeping her secret all these years. She told him how proud she was of him, how she had watched him grow into the man he had become, and how much she longed to be part of his life. Even if it is meant, facing his anger and rejection, it took her hours to finish the letter, and when she finally sealed it in an envelope, her hands were shaking. She planned to give it to him that night after he returned from work but as the day went on doubt began to creep in again what if this letter destroyed everything what if it rained the relationship she had with emmanuel and the ayodelis by the time emmanuel arrived home that evening ada was a bundle of nerve she had the letter tucked into her apron pocket and every time she saw him, she felt a surge of panic. But she knew she could not back out now. She had to be brief, just as Ungozi had urged her to be. After dinner, when everyone had gone to bed, Ada waited in the hallway near Emmanuel's room. Her heart raised as she approached his door. The letter clenched tightly in her hand. She was just about to knock when she heard voice inside. She paused, listening. Emmanuel was on the phone, his voice low but filled with excitement. Ifoma, I cannot wait to see you tomorrow. 
I am going to make this the most special night of our lives. Yes, I will be waiting for you at the restaurant. I love you too. Ada felt her heart sink. She could not do this. Not now. Emmanuel was about to propose to the woman he loved. How could she drop this bomb share on him at a such critical moment in his life? Tears filled her eyes as she stepped back from the door. The letter crumbling in her hand. She could not go through with it. Not tonight. As she walked back to her room, the weight of her decision pressed down on her chest. She had missed her chance once again. But deep down, she knew that the truth would find its way out. Eventually. Whether she was ready for it or not. Ada spent that night in tears, feeling trapped in a maze of regrets and fear. How could she watch Emmanuel start a new life, knowing the truth she carried? But just as she feared losing him, the thought of him hating her was unbearable. She tossed and turned, praying for strength, for a sign that would guide her through this mess. The next morning, she went about her duties as usual, but her heart was not in it. Emmanuel had left earlier to prepare for his big night with Ifoma. The house felt strangely, quiet without him around, and every corner seemed to echo with the secret she kept hiding. As she dusted the bookshelf in the living room, Mrs. Ayodele entered with a cup of tea. Settling down on the couch, she watched Ada in silence for a while before speaking. Ada, you seem distant these days, she said softly, her voice thing with concern. Is something troubling you? Ada froze for a moment, then turned to face her. She forced a smile. No, madam, everything is fine. Mrs. Ayodele studied her. I know when something is not right. You have been with us for so many years and you have become part of this family. If there is anything you need to talk about, anything at all, you can come to me. The kindness in her voice only made Ada's heart ache more. How could she tell Mrs. Ayodele the truth? This woman who had taken her in, treated her with respect and trusted her with her son, did not deserve such a betrayer. Thank you, madam, Ada said quietly, bowing her head. I appreciate that, but inside, her thoughts were a wide wind. The more she tried to find the right moment to reveal the truth, the more it seemed to slip away from her. Later that evening, as the sky darkened, Ada sat alone in a small room, the crumbled letter lying on the table in front of her. She picked it up, smoothing out the wrinkles with trembling hands. Maybe tonight was the night. Emmanuel would be back soon, and she could finally give him the letter. Maybe she would not have to speak the words herself. Maybe the letter would do it for her. She was deep in thought. When a knock on her door startled her, she quickly hid the letter and opened the door to find Mrs. Ayodele standing there, her face pale and anxious. Ada, I need your help, she said, her voice trembling. Ima, he has not come home and is not answering his phone. I am worried. He told us he had plans with Ifoma tonight, but something does not feel right. Ada's heart skip a bit. She grabbed her phone, dialing Emmanuel's number with shaking hands, but there was no answer. Fear gripped her as she imagined all the things that could have gone wrong. Without a word, she followed Mrs. Ayodele downstairs, where Mr. Ayodele was passing back and front, his face drawn with worry. I have called it for my parents, he said. His voice tightened. They said she left the house to meet Emmanuel hours ago, but she had not come home either. Panic set in, in the pits of Ada's stomach. 
What if something had happened to Emmanuel? What if she never got the chance to tell him the truth? Just then, Emmanuel called Mr. Ayodele. He quickly answered it. His voice tense. Emmanuel, where are you? But it was not Emmanuel on the other end. It was a stranger's voice, cold and unfamiliar. Your son is with us, the voice said. If you want him back, you will do exactly what we see. A chill ran down at that spine. Kidnappers. The words echoed in her mind, filling her with a dread. She had heard stories of kidnappers in Lagos, but she never imagined it would happen to someone she loved. Mr. Ayodele's face went pale as he listened to the demands. When he hung up, he looked at his wife, then at Ada, his voice barely above a whisper. They want 10 million naira. If we do not pay by tomorrow morning, they will kill him. The room felt silent. The weight of the situation pressed down on them like a suffocating blanket. Ada felt her knees weaken and she clutched the edge of a chair to steady herself. 10 million naira, it was a fortune even for the Ayodeles, but it was not the money that terrified Ada. It was the thoughts of losing Emmanuel, of never getting the chance to tell him the truth, of never hearing him call her mother. Mrs. Ayodele burst into tears, collapsing onto her husband's arms. What are we going to do? She cried, we have to get him back. We cannot lose our son. Ada stood frozen. Her mind raising, this could not be happening. Not now, not after all these years of waiting, hoping, and praying for the right moment. But now that moment was slipping away, and all she could do was watch helplessly. She wanted to scream, to cry out, to beg for another chance. But instead, she whispered a silent prayer, pleading with God to bring Emmanuel back to her to give her the opportunity to make things right before it was too late. And as the night wore on, filled with fear and uncertainty, Ada knew one thing for sure. She would do whatever it took to get her son back, no matter the cost. The night was long and suffocating, filled with fear and silent prayers. Ada sat on the coach, clutching the rosary beads, that had belonged to her mother. She prayed like she had never prayed before, begging God for a miracle. Every passing minute felt like a lifetime and the weight of uncertainty pressed down on her chest. By then, Mr. Ayodele had gathered the ransom money, but the tension in the house was palpable. They were ready to make the exchange, but the fear of something going wrong Gnar at everyone's heart. The kidnappers gave strict instructions. The money would be dropped off at a deserted warehouse in the Askesh of Lagos and Emmanuel would be released once they confirmed the payment. Ada wanted to go with them to be there when her son was returning safely. But Mr. Ayodele insisted she stay behind with Mrs. Ayodele who was too distraught to be left alone. Mr. Ayodele left the house with a ransom. Ada knelt before Mrs. Ayodele, holding her hands and whispering words of comfort. But inside, Ada was battling with her own demons. What if something went wrong? What if they never saw Emmanuel again? After what felt like an entity, the phone rang. It was Mr. Ayodele. We have made the exchange, he said, his voice shaking with relief. They have released Emmanuel. We are on our way to the hospital now. He is safe, but he is hot. Ada has kept a bit. Hot? How badly? She asked, her voice trembling. He is going to be okay, Mr. Ayodele assured her, but they roughed him up a bit. Just stay with his mother. I will bring him home soon. When they finally arrived at the hospital, Ada and Mrs. Ayodele 
rushed to Emmanuel's side. He was lying in hospital bed, his face bruised and his eyes swollen, but he managed a weak smile when he saw them. Mom, Dad, Ada, Emmanuel's voice was hoarse, but there was a warmth in his eyes that reassured Ada he was alive. He was safe. For a moment, all Ada wanted to do was hug him, hold him close and tell him everything. But the fear of losing him, of being rejected, still held her back. Days passed and Emmanuel slowly recovered from his injury. The Ayodele family was relieved and grateful, but Ada was a wreck. She could not keep living with the burden of her secret. The kidnapping has shown her how fragile life was, how easily everything could be taken away in an instant. One evening after Emmanuel had returned home, Ada finally gathered courage to speak with him. She found him sitting on the balcony, staring out at the stars. Emmanuel, can we talk? She asked softly, her heart pounding in her chest. He turned to her, nodding. Of course, Ada, what's on your mind? Ada sat down beside him, taking a deep breath. She had rehearsed this moment in her mind so many times, but now that it was here, she did not know where to begin. I have something to tell you, something important, she started, her voice barely above a whisper. It's about your past and mine. Emmanuel in confusion, but he listened quietly as Ada began to tell her story. She spoke of her younger years, the mistake she had made, and the painful decision she had been forced to make when she became pregnant. She told him about the child she had given up for abduction and how fate had brought her back to him as his nanny. By the time she finished, tears went down her face. She could not look Emmanuel in the eye, too afraid of what she might see there. Anger, rejection, betrayal. But then Emmanuel reached out and gently took her hand. Ada, you are my mother, he asked, her voice filled with emotion. Ada nodded, her tears flowing freely. Yes, Emmanuel, I am so sorry I never told you. I was scared that you would hate me, that I would lose you again. For a long moment, Emmanuel was silent, processing everything he had just heard. Then, to Ada's surprise, he pulled her into a tight embrace. I do not hate you, Ada, he whispered. I could never hate you. You made a hard choice. And I am sure it was not easy. But you are here now, and that is what matters. Ada sobbed into his shoulder, overwhelmed with relief. For years, she had feared this moment, feared the consequences of revealing the truth. But now, as she held her son in her arms, she realized that the truth has set her free. In the days that follows, the Ayodele family learned the truth as well. Though they were shocked at first, they eventually accepted Ada as more than just a nanny. They accepted her as family. They saw how much she loved Emmanuel, how much she had sacrificed and they embraced her with open hearts. And as for Emmanuel, he found peace in knowing his true origins. He forgave Ada for the choices she had made, understanding that she had done what she thought was best for him. Their bond grew stronger with each passing day, and Ada finally felt the weight of her past lift from her shoulders. Thanks guys for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel to support us. Like, share and do not forget to drop your comment below. And do not forget to tell us the country or the cities you are watching from. Thank you guys. We love you all.